everyone. Welcome to Total Transformation from Your Brain to Your Biz. And this is part two of a three-part series. This part will be focused on passion, purpose and profits, and purpose to profits. So before we get started, just wanted to share uh, for some of you that may be joining us for the first time. So part of my story is that before I was focused on the world's version of success, partial purpose and giving, I had forgotten a lot of my dreams back in college and earlier in life, making others seven, eight, nine figures, earning six figures, 155 pounds, the picture to the left was post an abusive relationship, post um, grad school, and um, just kind of in the throngs of getting started with a lot of things, spending over 150% of my income at its worst back in 2010, and in debt after creating a life to love focused on purpose and passion, limitless potential and giving back, 120 pounds. This picture on the right was after my first fitness show, after getting started with Herbalife, being coached by Team Edge, and really developing massive gratitude, healthy relationship with food, and so much more. Spending less than 40%, growth steadily increasing over 100% repeatedly, and um, basically free and very close to being debt free. So in this three part series, if you didn't listen to the last one, I highly encourage you do. I covered the divine laws. Um, there's also a handout and different things under freebies at fitlifecreation.com and um, covered also health and wealth habits that can really help you self assess where you're struggling and I always encourage people to start with the easiest because then you build confidence in yourself and start to see results. So in this part, we're gonna be focused on purpose and profits. And in the next part, which I'll release next week, will be on wealth, value creation, and business building. So on your habit identifiers, um, take a peek at that, and this is a refresher from part one, so you can find that again on freebies, and it's a nine-part scale, so let me show you real quick, and uh, basically, like I said, I really, really f encourage you that you focus on the easiest ones to start, So, and this will show you exactly where you need to go as well. Apologize for the slight delay. Don't know what happened there with my Wi-Fi connection, no problem. Um, so as I mentioned, freebies is where you would go as you see me doing right now. And you can see here, creating energy, creating time, creating space, creating fit, priorities, habits. So this is where we're going right now. And the other ones also give you tons of free tools. So I created kind of a free for all portal that anyone can access as opposed to forcing you to give um, your email to me, which you can still do for even more bonuses. So last time we talked about health, but what I really wanna zone in on this time is your wealth. And it's very correlated to your health as you will find. So, so many times I get feedback that, oh, I don't have money. I don't have money for this. I don't have money to invest. I don't have this. Well, part of the problem is, is we haven't been taught to develop a healthy relationship with money and, and or food and to really realize that food is fuel, to fuel our energy, to fuel our purpose, and money is seed. Meaning, be very mindful of where you invest your money and is it somewhere that's gonna bring you life or your purpose life or happiness um, or specific areas or is it in dead stuff? You know, and granted, we're supposed to enjoy, you know, and have the things that um, we, you know, you know, love or like or whatever the case is, but if you're only spending on those areas and no longer investing, so perfect example, 
you know, when I was in college and later, I invested a lot in education. I also spent a lot of money on other, you know, stuff and travel. But after college, my investment, quote unquote, in furthering myself had dwindled and the other parts were overcome. So back to the habit identifier, you can see here, you know, do you spend money on alcohol less than three times a month? Well, if you're answering that you do spend it more than three times a month, well, obviously there's wiggle room there for you to not only see results in your health, but for you to have more money. When the average drink costs 10 to $15, and if you're like the average American that typically spends, you know, not even just American, but a lot of nationalities, two to three times a week, you're going out, and let's say you drink two drinks every time, well, that's $100 a week. Boom. I just found $400 in your budget. You know, if you go to Starbucks, let's say on average, you know, again, four times a week, that's at least typically about $40 for the month. Boom. I just found another $160. So 40 times four, we're at $560. And then do you like jumping up to, you know, eat out? Let's say you eat out three times a week. Let's say you spend $30 every time you go. That's roughly $90 a week times two, four, 270, I'm sorry, 360. I was counting it times three. 90 times four, 360. So boom, you know, that's even more money. You know, so again, we are not taught to have a healthy relationship with money, so we avoid it out of fear or the thought process that we can't handle it or manage it. And you can see how very quickly things can add up, which you can also use to kind of help you with that. And we're not covering it here, but you're my space creator. So in that, you focus on things with faith, things with uh fear like money and so on and so forth. And so what I would encourage you to do is focus first on an easy area. So maybe an easy area for you is to cut back on, you know, alcohol. Maybe an easy area for you is to cut back on eating out, but you can see where very quickly it adds up. So the reason why I focus first on some adjustments before the purpose is you need to create space and room for more before you add more. Because what often happens is if we don't reduce something and we're adding something new, then we start to feel overwhelmed. Versus if you're changing and replacing, you're easing the pressure. So in this activity, we're gonna cover four parts and I'll show you an example in just a second. So what I would encourage you to do at this point is grab a piece of paper and yes, a piece of paper, not your phone, because it is a proven fact that if you write things down, they are 96% more likely to give you clarity and 96% more likely for you to achieve your goals. So there's a direct connection between your brain writing it down with your hands and focus. So it also makes me sad that in school, a lot of times kids don't practice handwriting anymore. So what you love, start thinking about this as you grab your piece of paper and write your name in a circle in the middle of the page. And I'm gonna show you how I went through this. And start thinking about what you've overcome, your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. And then if you had zero limitation on money, where you want impact to go, what causes and what purpose, what kind of legacy do you want to leave the world with? So for me, that's ending homelessness, that's battered women, that's the giving gym that encourages people to give to their causes and rewards them for doing so. So there's several things that Fit Life Creation is tied to for creation giving that I'm very, very clear on. But again, that was a four to six year journey of removing clutter to get back to my purpose and my passion. So here's a demo. So as you're doing yours, this will give you a visual. And my favorite colors are fuchsia, blue, and green, in case you couldn't tell. Um, fuchsia evokes passion, blue is purpose, calmness, God to me, green is um, impact, money, herbal life, so many different things. 
obviously here I just used two colors. I think I just got excited. So you see my name in the middle. And so for me, my passions are, you know, God, my future spouse, uh, fit life creation and giving, which ties directly to my passion as well as my purpose and my impacts, herbal life, family and friends, health and wealth. Um, then the things I've overcome. So looking back here, Forgiving. Forgiving used to be really hard for me on two spectrums because my mom is very forgiving and very unconditional. But at the same time, I saw or I grew up with my dad being very hard on us and very hard for him to forgive or hard for him to change. So I had two very wide spectrums. But I realized it's all a blessing because it really, really, really helps me relate on a number of different levels. My worth. I used to find my worth in, you know, achievements because growing up, my dad pushed us and pressured us so much that I realized the only time I really got recognized was when I, you know, achieved different things, whether it was school or positions or salary. So I, although those are my gifts, talents, and abilities, it's not good to find my worth in that or for you to find your worth in that because inherently, just by simply being and existing, you're priceless. Uh, business. So I've overcome so many things in business. I've worked in over 10 different industries. You know, I've collaborated with global companies, you know, providing impact, um, improved lots of different things. I used to be in uh, chief audit exec, and I absolutely love business. I love to learn. I love to, you know, provide value. I love to you know, figure out problems and, and be a problem solver and again, generate value. Uh, wealth, overcoming wealth and my spending, health, an abusive relationship. And as I mentioned, also, you know, gives talents and abilities. So this just gives you, you know, different snippets. You know, in my bio, you can see more or you can see some of my other things that, you know, we take so much for granted that we don't realize is inherently a gift and we wonder sometimes, well, why doesn't this person just get this? Or why don't they just read my mind? Well, that's because that's not their gifting area. And maybe part of my purpose or your purpose is to help them or teach them. Uh, like singing. Singing is not one of my gifts, talents, or abilities. But I love to write and I love to write poetry. So who knows? You know, maybe one day some of my poetry will actually be a song. But I won't be singing it. <laughs> um and then impact, I mentioned some of the causes and purpose and where I want the profits to be directed so that they're not squandered. So here's a quick overview on all the Fit Life creation experiences you need with us. And we have programs, academies, retreats, and more, as well as ambassadorships and fundraising solutions. So the results, health is strictly, this survey is strictly based on herbal life. However, we also have plate joy. We also have six pack bags. I've also created a portal and a number of other tools to intensify these results exponentially and to really set people up powerfully for success. Wealth, these skills are derived a lot from my own journey, from things that I've taught companies, from my um, basically history as a CPA, from a number of other things I've done with money and um, business from best practices from multiple industries and intertwining and just creating strategies for success through the academies and programs, uh, trip leadership and more. So you can look at more on our website. And our next session, I'll be talking about value creation. And it's a five part activity on how you take initiative, how you basically set yourself up for promotion and recognizing that maybe the promotion doesn't come from the company of where you are, but if you put the energy out there, inevitably it comes back seven, tenfold, infinity fold, and to really adjust attitudes and create a life you love with limitless potential and give back. So thank you so, so much, and I appreciate your time. And feel free to email, check out the websites, and um, hope to see you back for part three. And as an added note, here's some bonuses that I showed you earlier, the freebies as well. 
Thanks so much and have an awesome day.